Imagine that everyone in your year has set a maths test out of 100 marks. If the mean mark was, say, 50 out of 100, then you'd probably find that most people got marks that are about 50, right? You'd also probably find that as the marks got higher and higher above 50, and lower and lower below 50, there would be fewer and fewer people. What we've just described to you is data that is normally distributed. Whenever some data is normally distributed, we know that most of the data is centered around the mean. The further from the mean on both sides we get, the less data there is. And there's about half the data above the mean and half below it. So this data is normally distributed, and the graph we've got here is called the normal distribution. We see the normal distribution all over nature, the weight of newborn children, say. Most newborn children would have around the same weight, and only a few would be very high or very low. Because the exact numbers on the normal distribution are always going to depend on what situation we're looking at, we use something called the standard normal distribution. What's changed here? Well, the shape of the graph is identical, of course. Plus, we're still measuring probability on the y-axis. The numbers on the x-axis have changed, though. Firstly, the number in the middle, which is the mean of the data, is always zero on the standard normal distribution. The x-axis is measuring in standard deviations. So one means plus one standard deviation, and two means plus two standard deviations, and so on. Probabilities are always found as different parts of the area underneath the normal distribution curve. Because in any situation, the total probability that we can have is always 1. We can say that the total area underneath the graph is also 1. This essentially is telling us that the area of the right half is exactly 0.5, and the area of the left half is also exactly 0.5. It's important for this exam that you can make calculations using the standard normal distribution. The most common kind of questions are going to ask you to find probabilities on the graph. A typical question would look exactly like this. The P here means find the probability that. So what exactly are we finding the probability of? The answer's in the brackets. What we need to do is find the probability that some random variable, which doesn't matter, z is between 0 and 1.8 on the graph. We've said that the probabilities are always just areas underneath the curve. So this question is basically asking us to find this area. The real question though is how on earth are we possibly meant to find this area? Well luckily for all of us, we get given a special normal distribution table in our exam. The numbers in the middle of this table are all probabilities and one of them is the one we're after. We begin by locating 1.8 on the left-hand column. Then the 5 part can be found in the top row of the table. Where these two meet up is the probability that we're searching for. And so there it is. The probability that Z will lie between 0 and 1.85 is 0.4678, or almost 47%. Looking at the diagram for the normal distribution, this should make a bit of sense. The red area we shaded took up nearly half of the diagram, which means it nearly had a probability of 0.5. One of the most important things for you to understand about the normal distribution is that the right half perfectly mirrors the left half. We can use this to help us out of various tricky situations, like when the numbers in the problem we get are negative numbers. There's two more types of normal distribution questions that you might end up being asked. The first one would be something like this. On a diagram, we're being asked to find the size of this area. The reason this becomes a little tougher than the problems we've looked at so far is because it actually ends up requiring us to hunt down two different probabilities and then subtract one from the other. That's because the only way to find the answer to this problem is like this. When we find the probability that z is between 0 and 1.55, we get an answer of 0 0.4394. And when we find the probability that z is between 0 and 0 0.85 on the table, we get an answer of 0 0.3023. So we take one away from the other, 
and we get our final solution of 0.1371, or a probability of about 14%. Then there's a kind of question that involves a greater than or less than sign, like this one. It's best to think about this problem in different parts. For example, straight off the bat, it's obvious that this red area we're looking for includes the entire right half of the graph. As you know, each half of the graph has an area of exactly 0.5. So we can now pretty much forget about the right half and only focus on this little sliver here. Okay, great. On the table, the answer to this area, which is the probability that Z is between 0 and 0 0.43, is 0 0.1664. So to find the overall answer to this problem, all we've got to do is add that 0.5 from earlier to the 0.1664 we just found, giving us an answer of 0.6664. Remember, standard normal distribution describes data that is focused around the mean, with a 50% probability for data either side of the mean. We can find the probability of something occurring by calculating the area under the graph using our table data.